Well, to start, you know, we unfortunately, um, there was an unfortunate thing that happened at Virginia to open up the week. An unfortunate shooting which happened and, you know, I don't have to explain, you know, you know what happened because it's a thing that we know shouldn't happen, but yet it happened anyway. And again, it's unfortunate. I hope the entire community at Virginia, you know, hopefully they will find peace and closure. Um, to this sickening display of violence. Um, we don't know if Virginia is going to play against Virginia Tech on the 26th. They are not playing against Coastal Carolina this week. That game has been canceled, and rightfully so. And, you know, again, hoping that Charlottesville, you know, will be uplifted and gain positivity you know because this is a negative experience that you know the, these types of things fortunately they happen and I mean it, it's it's messed up it truly is um, I really have no more thoughts on the matter because, again, what's done, you know, is, you know, it's, 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 it's been done and justice will be served. Justice will be served to that individual on the who was formerly on the Virginia team and will now he will now face justice accordingly and I hope he gets whatever comes to him in any case week 12 of the college football season it's here it started you know you had some action snow last couple nights you had yeah, the college football playoff rankings get released in the middle of basketball games, and you know that being a total disaster, you know, because that basketball game went basically three hours, you know. And tonight we have a ranked matchup. Um, it's SMU Tulane, number twenty-one Tulane. Tulane did not slip very far after their loss to UCF, and they need to stop Tanner Mordecai tonight. You know, in about three hours or so from the recording of this video, they need to stop Tanner Mordecai because that man can sling it. The Mustangs, they still have an outside chance to get to the AAC championship game. They're going to need help, and the Green Wave defense needs to get back up and help themselves. They need to sack and keep Mordecai contained in this game. They need to keep Mordecai contained. If they can do that that things will go well. But then you have the Saturday slate. Now, we said a couple weeks ago this is the dead, you know, the dead week, you know, an uninteresting slate that turns interesting. This is a different kind of week. This is the cupcake week where it's the second to last week of the season and the SEC and the ACC and basically everybody decides to unload and unwind with some uninteresting non-conference matchups or uninteresting matchups in conference in general but we still have some intriguing things going on just this just so you know we still have some intriguing things going on now because ESPN decided to be a little weird about it we have a game starting at 10 a.m. Central Time 11 Eastern and that is that Navy UCF game in which UCF is ranked number 20 John Rice Plumley, Gus Malzahn this UCF Knights crew, they are in position, they are in the right position to go to the AAC Championship, take the New Year's Six spot and go to the Cotton Bowl. Navy's not very good, we know that, they 
did mount a comeback effort against Notre Dame last week that failed, but I don't see I don't see that happening this week. I hope. First bolded game though of the week is TCU Baylor. Of course, gotta highlight the Big Twelve. Big Twelve has been the best conference to watch this year for a reason. You got Kendrick Miller. You got you you got this Horn Frogs team that's undefeated. You know they. TC wants to stay undefeated. They want to stay perfect, and this is a Baylor squad that's that they're tough, but they've struggled throughout the year. So we'll see if TCU can stay undefeated. Teams are salivating to see TCU lose. They are salivating to see TCU lose. Illinois Michigan is a game that you know kind of fell off the radar, you know, a little bit. I still have it bolded. As one of my six games of the week, but the Illini defense hasn't been very good lately. And you know, Blake Corum, JJ McCarthy, they're looking to keep trucking along. You know, this is Michigan's last big test before the game, so Illinois has to make this count if they can make it count. There's also Louis, not Louisville, we'll talk about Louisville in a minute. There's also Louisiana and Florida State. You know, Jordan Travis has been looking very, very comfortable with the Knowles. Mike Norvell's team has looked very much improved. Unfortunately, the Raging Cajuns just haven't been very good this year. They haven't looked like that team in the past. You know, they're only 5-5, five and five, so Florida State should take care of business. Austin P takes on Alabama. Nick Saban, he really wanted his cupcake because he knows Alabama. Alabama's really shut out of any... You know, discussion for the CFP. They have no good wins. You know, you know they have the Ole Miss win now, but they still lost to LSU. And you know, uh, <laughs> the Ole Miss win alone is not enough for Alabama. Like, it's not enough. Austin P. On the other hand, they are not looking like they're going to the FCS playoffs either. There's just too much going on in the FCS right now to where Austin Peay will be able to go. Maybe they can make this a game against Alabama. You know, I doubt they'll get that win. You know, I think we all doubt that. Like, it's a 99.9% .9 chance that Austin Peay will lose this game to Alabama. Kansas State, number 15 in the country, taking on West Virginia. You know, you have Deuce Bond. Will Howard is going to be playing instead of Adrian Martinez because Martinez is hurt. And will be done for a few weeks. And this Wildcats team trying to lock up a Big 12 championship spot. They got to go to Morgan Town to do so, though. You know, the Mountaineers' defense isn't that great. But this offense for the Mountaineers can play. So that does not work out in the Cats' favor. You know, having an offense that can, you know, keep up with you. That's just how it is in the Big 12. And... You know, Kansas State, all they have to do is just win these last two games, and they are scot-free. They get to go to the Big 12 championship unscathed. But if they lose one of these games, West Virginia now, and then Kansas next week, things get a little dicey. So, Kansas State has to stay with it. There's also Oregon State, Arizona State, Jonathan Smith, and, and the Beavs, you know, they're... They're right back in the top 25 as they should be. They, they just they've been able to win. You know they won eight games already. You know, or rather they won seven. Excuse me, not eight. But they can win their eighth game against Arizona State, who hasn't looked very good at all. And then you have Boston College, Notre Dame. We'll see if Drew Pine can keep up this type of momentum he had against Navy last week. You know. Um, Boston College still upset minded though they already took down NC State so um, you know, if Notre Dame loses this game to Boston College it's going to be real real funny because we know Boston College can do it based off of what happened in the afternoon you literally gotta you might have to channel surf for this one you might have to do a lot of channel surfing you have Miami Clemson in which the Tigers they need to try to impress the committee they are still on the outside looking in. They want to impress the committee. And 
the Canes, they're not very good. We know this. There's Georgia, Kentucky. Again, a game that's just not very interesting anymore. Will Levis is not that guy. Please, I hope nobody drafts him at number one or anything like that. He, his draft stock needs to be going down a lot. He has not looked good this year. And Georgia, they might eat him alive. You know, so, I mean, again, I never really saw the hype. I was like, wait, why is Levis being touted as, you know, like a top draft prospect? And it's like, I, I don't get it. I really don't get it. There's also CJ Stroud and the Ohio State Buckeyes, you know, looking to put up one more blowout against Maryland before the game. It'd be hilarious if Ohio State loses this game. Same thing as if it'd be hilarious if Illinois beats Michigan. It'd be hilarious because these two teams really they're neck and neck right now. But I've been giving the edge to Ohio State all season. And there are reasons why, you know, I have because Ohio State is just, you know, completely, completely, you know, blowing out opponents. You know, like Michigan's had some trouble at times blowing teams out. You know, it kind of feels boring to watch Michigan. You know, Michigan's non conference schedule is not good. That has been a thing that people have been bringing up, and for good reason. And, you know, same old, same old. But things will be settled if these two teams can just win this week, which maybe they should, but who knows. It's also Penn State Rutgers. Again, Penn State looking like, again, they're going to win 10 games. They're going to win 10 games. Nick Singleton, he might run all over the Scarlet Knights in this game. And there's NC State Louisville. Don't know why NC State is even ranked, but Dave Doran. And the Wolfpack, they're trying to keep their season from spiraling out of control. And Louisville's a good team. Don't get me wrong. Louisville's a good team. They can play, you know, pretty good football. But again, I wonder why NC State's even ranked. They shouldn't be. And there's also Cincinnati Temple. Ben Bryant and those Bearcats, they, they need to keep on winning. They're also in a great spot to get to the AAC championship if they can beat Tulane, but they gotta beat Temple first. And then Georgia Tech, North Carolina, Drake May, please, I'm begging you this year, I'm begging the Heisman voters to give Drake May the Heisman. Georgia Tech's defense is terrible. Should have given the Heisman to Kenny Pickett last year. Give it to the right man this year, Drake May. I do not think Georgia Tech will do what they did last year in North Carolina. Georgia Tech is just not very good. Not a good team to watch either. In the evening, we got Tennessee, South Carolina. I mean, South Carolina's looked pretty bad the last couple of weeks. Hendon Hooker and the balls, they're going for style points. They they think they still have a chance to go to the college football playoff, and they still do. They still do. Um... They're going to need more than style points, though. And, you know, South Carolina might be their next victim. There's also Ole Miss, Arkansas. You know, Lane Kiffin and crew, they got to bounce back, you know, against an okay Arkansas team. We wonder if KJ Jefferson's going to play in this game because he didn't last week. And I feel like that would have made a difference against LSU. I feel like it. There's also Oklahoma State, Oklahoma. Bedlam. Yes, I've highlighted this game. Oklahoma State is ranked number 22 in the country. Oklahoma is trying to go bowling. Oklahoma State still has an opportunity to go to the Big 12 championship. And it's going to come down to Spencer Sanders. Is he going to play? Because Gunnar Gundy, he was not that great. He really was not. Like, this man threw two interceptions. Had a touchdown, he threw two picks. One of them was one of the worst picks I think I've seen in quite some time, though. So, you know, there's that. Then there's also the game in L.A. Game of the week type material. It really is the game of the week, honestly. USC, UCLA, Caleb Williams versus Dorian Thompson Robinson. Along with Zach Charbonnet backing up DTR. USC wants to go to the CFP, but they haven't had the wins necessary, and it starts, the wins can start to add up this week if they beat UCLA. UCLA, they want to get to the Pac-12 championship. They want to spoil USC's 
quite frankly, really good run, you know. One loss and the bad defense, you know, you can all be excused. But this has been a great year for USC, a revitalizing type year for the Trojans. And these two offenses can go off and score in bunches. And we're going to get an entertaining one in the game of the week. UAB takes on LSU. You know, UAB's kind of out of the conference race, if I'm not mistaken, in the CUSA. And LSU, you know, Brian Kelly's Tigers just looking to cruise on ahead, waiting and waiting, you know, for A&M. And then the SEC Championship against Georgia. I don't think UAB is going to give LSU any trouble. It's next week that might give LSU some trouble. And the week after, of course. But right now, LSU, they just need to keep winning. You know, they are still alive for a CFP spot. And they just need to keep winning. Colorado, the buffs are bad. So I expect Michael Penix and the Huskies to just take care of things. Take care of it pretty easily in this game against Colorado. And then, late at night... Pac-12 after dark, it's going to be beautiful. A Pac-12 title game eliminator, if you will, between Bo Nix and the Ducks and Cam Rising and the Utes. Going to be one hell of a game. Both these teams can play defense. Both these teams have good rushing offenses. Both these teams have some good quarterback play. It's going to be one hell of a game between two top 12 teams in the college football playoff rankings and you know just cause it's Pac-12 after dark does not mean you have to turn this game off keep that game on I'm gonna be watching because again I need to watch something you know come you know um, December 2nd I need to watch something you know from the Pac-12 so I'm gonna be definitely keeping my eyes on the Pac-12 championship because Rose Bowl still needs somebody you know, one of these other major bowls needs somebody else from the Pac-12. Uh, again, this has been a good year for the Pac-12, but things need to go their way if they can get back to the CFP. And it starts, you know, it, it starts with these two games that are going to pretty much eliminate some teams from the discussion. Now, there's still a lot that can go down. I mean, it's going to be crazy. We could have a five-way tie with teams having two losses in the back 12. That's just how insane it could get. But, you know, things, things could change. You never know. And until Sunday, I'm going to get on up out of here and let you guys enjoy your weekend as we get ready for feast week we get ready for all the college football and all the nfl thanksgiving feasts and all that good stuff it's going to be one hell of a week next week i cannot wait i'm ready i'm ready already but we got to get through week 12 first before we get to week 13 though so again i'll see you all later on talk the nfl and take care everybody